And Pennsylvania energy is our big problem. They're not wrong. Mr. President, to Iran in this moment? Don't. Our American personnel would ask us that risk, Mr. President. All right, folks, breaking news, emergency video. I'm sure many of you have heard by now, but we just got serious escalation in the Middle East. OK, things are getting hot. Things are getting real. I'm not going to say World War Three immediately, but if you want to have that conversation, we are undeniably on the war path to get there. We're certainly getting a lot closer. And one can make the argument, as we largely will in this video, that this is the direct result of American leadership over the past couple of years, directly because of the failed foreign policy and the weakness plus, you know, nonsense, essentially, of Joe Biden. OK, but first, what actually happened today is that Iran has directly attacked the state of Israel. This is not a proxy war, right? This is not Iranian backed militias or Israeli backed militias. No. Um, basically, Iran sent a bunch of suicide drones, kamikaze drones and cruise missiles directly over the state of Israel. I'm not sure how many of them hit yet. I think the Iron Dome did take out the majority of them. But yeah, undeniably, again, huge escalation in the Middle East. And this comes just 10 days after Israel took out an Iranian, I believe it was a consulate or an embassy over in Syria. And so Iran is saying that this is a retaliatory attack. Israel now, after this, went out and said that they are going to directly retaliate over the Iranian homeland. OK, so this is a situation, obviously, that's getting very sticky, getting very messy. And we can talk about the geopolitical implications of it in a second and maybe later on as this all goes further. But I want to read for you. So breaking from Colin Rugg that Iran has reportedly concluded their military action against Israel, the announcement came as the U.S. reportedly intercepted some of the suicide drones launched by Iran. So this is what the state of Iran said. They said the matter can be deemed concluded. However, should the Israeli regime make another mistake, Iran's response will be considerably more severe. It is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime from which the U.S. must stay away. So Iran's trying to say, look, this is between us and Israel, U.S. back off. I'm sure people have their own thoughts about it. Frankly, we can have that conversation another time. OK, I mean, whatever happens is going to happen for the record. I do not believe that American blood should be shed over this issue. OK, um, I know hot take, right? We shouldn't go to war with Iran. But let's zoom out for a second and just think bigger picture here. And the bigger picture here, folks, is that this whole thing, you want to go back to October 7th and the war in Gaza, you want to go to Iran, and now, obviously, that is actually something right when October 7th happened that I warned of. I said, look, the thing we should all not want is for Iran to be directly involved in this conflict, right, for this conflict to escalate. Clearly, that is what is happening here. But let me go on the record and say that one could make a very strong case, folks, that this is because of who, right? It's because of Joe Biden. And you say, how is it because of Joe Biden? Well, there is something, as you saw under Donald Trump, about American leadership, like it or not, that dictates what happens around the rest of the world. Now, historically, establishment politicians in both parties have abused that sort of American authority as the superpower around the world. And so what were we doing under Bush, we were invading Iraq and, you know, under Clinton, we were bombing all these places in the Middle East that led to 9-11, et cetera, et cetera. But what 
Trump laid out, essentially, you know, people can call it isolationism, whatever. But to some degree, it's not so much isolationism. It's called American peacemaking or peacekeeping, right? Kept the world order stable through peace, through strength. And ultimately, that's what you want. You don't want wars around the world. Nobody wants that, right? You don't want to be causing them. You don't want to be instigating them. If anything, you want to be preventing them. But it is simultaneously the weakness of Joe Biden combined with this weird amalgamation where he's also obsessed with involvement in foreign conflicts, i.e. Ukraine and stuff like that, that uh, has gotten us to this point. And so let me put it very simply for you folks. You look at what has taken place tonight and what will go on over the next couple of weeks. I think it becomes clear this is arguably the most important reason why not just America, but the world needs Donald Trump back in power. OK, because look at what is happening without him. Look at what is happening under Joe Biden. You can spin it any way you want. But Ukraine, Russia did not invade Ukraine under the presidency of Donald Trump. The Chinese hypothetical invasion of Taiwan wasn't really even talked about extensively or floated extensively, of course, until Joe Biden took power. And of course, we cannot fail to mention the entire situation in Israel and the Middle East right now. And so the, the point here, folks, is this. If you want to avoid World War III, if you want to move closer to world peace and not further away from it, that is the most important reason. And by the way, that's not a, a minor issue, right? I know people think foreign policy can be this thing that's far away. It's sort of obscure. It's abstract. It's irrelevant. No. OK, because we're talking about a situation where we know how World War Three ends nuclear annihilation. I'm not saying it'll happen overnight because of Joe Biden, but you do not want to have a state of the world that is moving closer to that. You don't want that doomsday clock to be going up. You want it to be going down. And that's why I would argue avoiding World War Three may be the most important issue on the ballot in November. OK, I'm just going to say that, you know, it should triumph a lot of other issues. And uh, to the people who have personal grievances with Donald Trump, I know there's still a lot of holdout conservatives here. They're mad at him over, say, abortion or the vaccine or this or that. I ask you to look at what's happening right now and ask yourself what I mean, what choice do we have? Truly. OK, anyways, folks, wanted to show this really quickly, the uh, great irony of this. So yesterday, right before this happened, some reporters asked Joe Biden what we should do or what his message was to Iran and uh, take a listen. And this basically sums up America on the global stage under his leadership. Here you go. Yeah. Mr. President, what is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Are American personnel and assets at risk, Mr. President? <laughs> Mr. President, are, are American troops at risk as well? He don't to Iran, he says. Don't do it. Yeah, update, they did. So, you know, he's he's doing a great job, guys. This is the stability and decency and honesty and normalcy that Joe Biden has restored to our political system. Okay. We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel, and Iran will not succeed. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Mr. President. Of course, even more ironically, folks, here was Joe Biden back in 2020, and it, it just tells you a lot, right? Warning everyone, saying that Donald Trump is going to lead us to war with Iran. Four years later, this clip does not age well. Take the a look. The world has changed because what Trump has done. And the American people, including independents and some Republicans, know how bad he is, know how much he's misrepresented, know how he's getting close to getting us in a war. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. The fact of the matter is, there's a lot at stake in this election. Oh, the irony. Oh, the irony, folks. The world cannot survive four more years of Joe Biden. OK, it just can't. America can't survive for sure. I mean, I think the border crisis alone, if anything else, should tell you the importance and the magnitude of why Joe Biden needs to be taken out of office in this election. Because let me just tell you, right, four more years of that border, America cannot come back from that. It's impossible, right? But you know, beyond that, 
you look at something like this, can can anyone take four more years of Joe Biden, right, on any different issue? And of course, if you are wondering what is Joe Biden's response to this entire situation, if you think I'm being a little bit uh, disingenuous here, okay, give Biden a chance. What is he going to do about this? Well, earlier today, he said he was going to address the nation from the Oval Office, okay? He was going to do one of those presidential addresses, and credit to him, that's probably, you would think, Think a good idea, right? You would think, I mean, this is a very major event that just, just took place in the world, in the Middle East, okay? It has serious implications in the world. It is a huge escalation towards World War III. Yes, you're the president. Politics aside, you should talk to the people. Well, 5 p.m., it says, Biden to address the nation from the Oval Office. An hour later, the White House now says that Biden is not going to speak, Okay. So, you know, <laughs> huge event in the world. Biden, um, should I go out there and address the people? I don't know. I'm too sleepy. You know what? Screw it. Let's just not address the nation. He is silent. The press secretary is silent. The entire administration tonight has basically gone into hiding. OK, so if I were to look at anything truly. You know, th this may be honestly remembered as a moment where Joe Biden just straight up threw away the election. OK, because you have an event this big around the world. And what does the president do? He's in hiding again. Not a good look. President Trump, on the other hand, you know, very often showing a much higher degree of leadership of presidential leadership than our actual sitting president right now took the moment to instead address the nation for himself uh, at the campaign rally tonight. And uh, here you go. Listen to what Donald Trump had to say about Iran's attack against Israel. Before going any further, I want to say God bless the people of Israel. They're under attack right now. That's that's because we show great weakness. This would not happen. The weakness that we've shown is unbelievable, and it would not have happened if we were in office. You know that. They know that. Everybody knows that. But America prays for Israel. We send our absolute support to everyone in harm's way. This is an attack that would not have happened. I mean, to think about to think about what we have to go through and the things we put up with, with the border, with uh, no energy independence, with all electric cars. Would everybody like to buy an electric car for the rest of you? But we will return the world to peace through strength, and it'll happen very quickly. I will revive American strength abroad, and we will restore American strength at home. We were respected four years ago all over the world. Today, we are considered a joke. It's not going to be for long. Believe me, it's not going to be for long. And on that subject, there's actually apparently a new chant that has broken out at Donald Trump rallies, and I'm all in favor of it. It is uh, apparently Genocide Joe, which accurate. OK, I I'm, I'm all for it. OK, here you go. One of the leading drivers of Biden's inflation disaster is his war on American energy and Pennsylvania energy is a big problem. Genocide Joe! Genocide Joe! There you have it, folks. OK. It's very true. By the way, you know why I believe Donald Trump when he says this whole situation wouldn't have happened when he was president, besides the fact that we have empirical evidence, OK, is the fact that Iran, as he talks about very often, was going broke when he was president, because unlike Obama and now Biden, he was not unfreezing supposedly old Iranian assets. You wonder that money we give to Iran, quote unquote. It's old assets from before the Iranian revolution and the new regime of Iran claims it's theirs. And then Obama sent the money over. What do you think they did with the money? Right. So Trump actually said, OK, you're not getting any more money. Biden is now once again sending over the money. And so we, first of all, have a situation where 
there's that. And then on top of that, Trump was basically putting a de facto embargo on Iranian oil. He was telling other countries, don't buy Iranian oil. If you do, we're not going to do business with you. And so as he brings up very often, right, Iran simply at the time did not have the money to finance Hamas, to finance Hezbollah, to be able to do all this stuff with trying to go to war with Israel and all that. So, you know, that is uh, point number one. But of course, point number two in that is the stupidity of all of this, which is we're talking about a war going on right now in the Middle East. And guess what America under Biden is doing? We are funding both sides of the war. Okay, that makes so much sense, right? We give Israel a bunch of money. First of all, I would argue way too much, but whatever. Okay, we give Israel a bunch of money. All right, we say we're on the side of Israel, but then at the same time, we give Iran the money. And so you literally have a situation where, you know, tonight, I don't know if you guys see that meme, but the missiles that are coming to Israel are funded by the United States tax dollars. And then the <laughs> interceptor Iron Dome, also funded by uh, United States tax dollars. Folks, that situation has to end. It's ridiculous. That's why we need a president who obviously puts America first. But it goes deeper than that, because if you don't want people our age, my age, to get drafted in another war for the American regime, for Biden, for whatever nonsense and neocon interests we're talking about here... That's a reason why you got to vote for Donald Trump. It's true. If you want to move the world closer to peace and further away from nuclear annihilation, that's a reason you got to vote for Donald Trump. And I hope the magnitude of everything we have seen tonight puts that on full display. With that said, folks, be sure to let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comment section down below. Be sure to say a prayer tonight for peace. OK, I think that's what we're for here, folks, is peace. We want to see stability in the Middle East, not war. So be sure to say a prayer for that. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And until next time, Alpha Moves Only. God bless and peace.